Hi guys, welcome to the healthcare channel. Today's video we will talk about ischemic heart disease. What is ischemic heart disease? Ischemic heart disease, also referred to as coronary heart disease, occurs when the blood flow to the gut's muscle is reduced due to a partial or complete blockage of the arteries supplying it with blood. If we consider the coronary arteries to be a system of tubes, as they progressively become blocked it means the liquid flowing through them, during this case, blood, doesn't reach its destination, the heart, correctly. How many people are suffering from ischemic heart disease? The ischemic heart disease may be a quite common illness that affects an outsized part of the population in both developed and developing countries. It is estimated that within us approximately 15.4 million people aged over 20 years have ischemic heart disease, this represents 6.4% of the population, 7.9% of men and 5.1% of women. In Europe, the disorder is calculated to cause 4 million deaths per year, that's like 47% of all deaths. The prevalence of ischemic heart condition increases with age and is bigger in men than women, even within the elderly. Studies show that coronary heart condition affects twice as many men and three times as many ladies when aged 65 to 94 years compared to those aged between 35 and 64 years old. In men, ischemic heart disease most typically manifests as an infarction, heart attack, while in women it always presents as angina. In developed countries the prevalence of ischemic heart disease is currently tending to decrease, because of improved treatments and healthier lifestyles, nevertheless, the prevalence continues to extend in developing nations. Either way, ischemic heart disease remains the most explanation for death among adults in both developing and more affluent countries. Causes of ischemic heart disease Ischemic heart disease is caused by arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis may be a chronic inflammation of the arteries that causes them to harden and accumulate cholesterol plaques, atheromatous plaques, on their walls. This results in an increased risk of thrombus formation, stationary blood clots attached to vessel linings. Arteriosclerosis can affect any of the arteries within the body and produces different symptoms counting on which organ is affected. If it occurs in arteries that carry blood to the brain, then it's going to cause a stroke or cerebrovascular accident, if it occurs in arteries supplying the legs, then it could translate into pain when walking, if it happens in arteries that deliver blood to the guts itself it's going to cause angina, chest pain, or myocardial infarction, heart attack. Symptoms of ischemic heart disease. In the event of a coronary blockage, the cells forming the guts muscle suffer a reduced oxygen and nutrient supply, which manifests as pain. 1 chest pain. The pain that sometimes characterizes ischemic heart disease is described as tightness within the chest which may occasionally radiate to the bottom of the neck, the jaw, arms, normally the left arm, or back. It's sometimes amid shortness of breath, dizziness, cold sweats, nausea and vomiting, palpitations or maybe the loss of consciousness. It should be taken into consideration that pain arising from ischemic heart disease doesn't always present such typical characteristics, particularly in women, the elderly and patients with diabetes. In some cases, ischemic heart disease can present with pain within the upper abdomen, whereas on other occasions shortness of breath is that the only symptom. If you notice any discomfort in your chest, albeit it's not one among the standard symptoms described above, then you ought to visit your doctor as soon as possible too. Shortness of breath, dyspnea. The heart becomes weaker and may not pump blood towards the remainder of the body. Therefore blood stagnates within the lungs, which fills with fluid, and it becomes harder to breathe. This is often one among the foremost significant complications because it indicates that the infarction or angina is severe. 3. Palpitations. Patients notice a robust, or offbeat, heartbeat in the chest which might be secondary to arrhythmia. There are many sorts of palpitation of varying severity, but all of them tend to supply a rapid pulse and a fluttering or thumping feeling within the chest. 4. Sweating, nausea and vomiting. These symptoms may all appear together or individually. Actually, they're caused by the body's response, specifically that of the systema nervosum, to the gut's muscle ischemia which represents a significant injury. 5. Loss of consciousness. In the context of infarction, a loss of consciousness is thanks to problems with the heart's conduction or the presence of severe arrhythmias, because it loses all capacity to pump blood, cardiac arrest. Tests and diagnosis of ischemic heart condition. 1. Medical record. The primary step in diagnosing ischemic heart disease derives from an interview together with your doctor. Your doctor will first evaluate the presence of any cardiovascular risk factors, case history, whether you smoke, the presence of diseases related to ischemic cardiomyopathies, like diabetes, high vital sign or hypercholesterolemia. 
Secondly, your doctor will identify the characteristics of pain by determining whether it's a restrictive or a stabbing feeling, is related to physical effort or a particular position, is related to nausea or shortness of breath, or it radiates towards the shoulders, jaw or back. The combined information taken from both sections of the interview is employed to work out whether the patient has ischemic heart condition and to pick the foremost suitable tests to verify the diagnosis. 2. Electrocardiogram. An electrocardiogram employs some conductive patches electrodes, stuck to the skin to record the heart's electrical activity. The cells during a diseased heart don't conduct electricity normally, patients with an infarction tend to supply an atypical electrocardiogram tracing. Electrocardiograms also reveal any connective tissue from previous infarctions or the presence of an arrhythmia. Nevertheless, it's important to understand that not all heart problems are reflected in an electrocardiogram. Angina can only be detected if the test is performed while the patient experiences pain. Nor does an electrocardiogram provide any information about the state of the valves or the dimensions of the guts. 3. Blood analysis. An attack causes certain proteins troponins, to be released from the guts and into the bloodstream. It sometimes takes several hours before these proteins are often detected during a blood sample therefore the analysis must be repeated after six hours. 4. Chest X-ray. Chest X-rays help estimate the dimensions of the guts and therefore the great vessels, also because of the condition of the lungs. They will provide guidance regarding the presence of fluid within the lungs and help rule out other causes of pain, like pneumonia. 5. Echocardiography or echocardiogram. Doctors use ultrasound to see the heart size, shape, and movement on a screen. The technique doesn't provide a view of the arteries, so we cannot tell whether or not they're obstructed, but it does provide vital information regarding heart function. If the patient has suffered an outsized infarction the damaged area of the guts will move abnormally. Hence ultrasound is often want to estimate the dimensions of infarction and its repercussions on the gut's muscle. It also helps us determine whether the valves are working correctly or if there are other complications secondary to the gut's attack. 6. Cardiac assay or ergometry. If there are doubts about whether or not the patient's pain is thanks to a scarcity of blood supply reaching a neighborhood of the guts, then the simplest option is to hold out an assay. It consists of recording an electrocardiogram while the patient reaches ever-increasing levels of physical strain at programmed intensities. The test is often conducted on a treadmill, the speed and slope are both increased progressively, or a stationary exocycle, in which case the resistance increases gradually. Patients who cannot exert themselves physically are often administered medicines that exercise the guts without having to maneuver the remainder of the body. The patient's response to the present stress is observed throughout the test, do they experience any pain, what are the consequences on vital sign and pulse, or are there any alterations on the electrocardiogram indicating a scarcity of coronary blood supply. The strain electrocardiogram trace is often combined with imaging studies so as to extend the test's diagnostic accuracy. 7. Coronary computerized tomography, coronary CT. To hold out a coronary CT, the patient lies on a table that enters into a tomography machine or scanner. The machine uses X-rays to gather images of the guts, these can subsequently be want to determine the degree of an obstruction within the coronary arteries. To supply reliable images, the patient must not have tons of calcium in their arteries. Furthermore, the guts must be beating slowly so as to collect the pictures, so patients are sometimes administered medicine to decrease the pulse before undergoing the scan. In our next video, we will talk about the treatment and prevention of ischemic heart disease. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more recommendations on health, relationship, lifestyle and other helpful information to form life easier.